you just, some people just have this innate knowledge from birth about, I'm, I know a lot about weaponry, I know a lot about the military, and it's just, I don't know where it comes from. A lot, some people just know a lot about a sure. specific subject, but where does this come from? Reincarnation has been a highly debated topic for many, many years. It is a strong belief in a lot of cultures and religions, but because it can't necessarily be proven without a doubt, there are a lot of skeptics. Many people who believe in reincarnation don't have a ton of memories from their former lives, but some can remember it like it just happened yesterday. On today's top 10 list, I am going to be covering 10 people who claim to be reincarnated from someone famous. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Ryan. A boy named Ryan was born in 2005, and when he was just 4 years old, he began waking up, clutching his chest, and screaming about his heart exploding in Hollywood. Okay, not really normal behavior for a 4 year old, and definitely something to look into. After this, Ryan began to share more details with his parents about a life he says he can remember living. As it turns out, Ryan believes that he is the reincarnation of a famous Hollywood talent agent, Marty Martin, who passed away around around 50 years before Ryan was born. Ryan claimed things like how he had two sisters, one of which was a dancer, and that his mother had curly brown hair, and all of this was true to the life of Martin. He also claimed that he lived on a street that had rock in the name, and Martin lived on a street called Roxbury. Eventually this all led to Ryan meeting Martin's daughter in real life, and apparently Ryan was extremely standoffish during the meeting, and after, he told his mother that his daughter's energy had changed. A psychiatrist a psychiatrist who specifically researches reincarnation has said that meeting people from their past life who have moved on can offer them closure and causes them to forget their former life. This is definitely an interesting thought. I really wonder what happened here for sure. Moving on to number 9, we have Helen Smith. A woman who was born in 1861 by the name of Catherine Mueller ended up changing her name to Helen Smith, and she believed she was reincarnated from the French queen Marie Antoinette, as well well as a reincarnation of an Arabic sheikh and also the wife of a Hindu prince. This is a lot of claims and I honestly didn't know that people would be able to remember multiple past lives. She spent her whole life working as a spiritual medium and she said she could receive messages from unseen creatures. She also said that she could communicate with Martians and knew the language that was spoken on Mars, sometimes even writing this language down. She also drew what she said Mars looked like which included boats and houses and plants and lakes. Considering it is highly, highly unlikely that Mars had any of these things, I think I'm having a hard time believing this one, but I'm sure in the late 1800s and early 1900s, she certainly would have had many people fooled. In our number 8 spot today, we have Sonam Wangdu. In 1991, Sonam Wangdu was born in Seattle, and by the time he was 2 years old, he knew that he was the reincarnation of the Tibetan Lama, Daesheng Rinpoche. The first. What's crazy crazy is that the third reincarnation of Daesheng Rinpoche, who passed away in 1987, said before his passing that he would be reincarnated in Seattle. In 1996, Sonam had already changed his name to Trula, which means reincarnation, and he was leaving his family forever to go and be raised by monks while he studied Tibetan Buddhism in Kathmandu, Nepal. This is where he eventually became the head of a monastery. In 2016, he was asked how long he would stay in Nepal, and he just said, lots of time. He is still there and still continues to live as the fourth reincarnation of Daesheng Rinpoche. In our number 7 spot today we have John Rothwell. A man who was once named John Rothwell has since changed his name to King Arthur Pendragon because he believes he is the reincarnation of you guessed it, King Arthur. John was once just a regular biker, but in 1986 when he learned about King Arthur, he just felt like their lives were too similar. I'm not exactly sure what similarities their lives could have held, but he was convinced. And apparently being a reincarnation of a king nowadays is very tough work. He says that when he holds his worship sessions at Stonehenge, him and his followers have to pay for parking, which is obviously something he didn't have to deal with in his former life. He even went as far as to take the tickets to court, saying that it was unfair that they were being made to pay to pray and that this infringed on his rights to worship. I mean, I'm not exactly sure the legalities of this exact situation, but the judge did end up ruling the fees as reasonable and legal, so 
that might just be the answer. In our number six spot today, we have Jeffrey Keen. Jeffrey Keen had lived a lot of his life and was already retired when he started to believe in his past life. Jeffrey and his wife went on a vacation to Maryland where they visited a battlefield from the Civil War that was called Sunken Road, and that is when he became overwhelmed with emotion. Apparently, the emotion was so strong that he truly thought he might be having a heart attack. After this emotion passed and he was able to gather himself, he still felt an unbelievable connection to this place. At a later date, he encountered a psychic at a party and had relayed this story to them. The psychic asked if he believed in reincarnation, and Jeffrey felt like he had to reply with the words, not yet. After this day, Jeffrey was reading a Civil War magazine when he came across a Civil War general named General Gordon. General Gordon had fought at Sunken Road, and during this battle, he was known for constantly shouting the words, not yet. This of course caused Jeffrey to do more research into the general, where he found even more connections, such as how on his 30th birthday, Jeffrey had to go to the hospital with a random, really terrible jaw pain, and when General Gordon was 30, he was shot in the jaw. Or how General Gordon had suffered certain injuries and Jeffrey had unexplained marks on his body in the same spots. This could all be coincidence, but it is definitely a very interesting story regardless. In our number 5 spot today, we have Sergei Ben Hayon. Sergei Ben Hayon is an Australian bankrupt tennis coach who believes he is the reincarnation of famous Italian artist and scientist Leonardo da Vinci. This would be fine, except for Sergei is also the founder of a pretty harmful cult called Universal Medicine, which has been criticized for its extremely unorthodox practices and the fact that he has zero medical qualifications. He not only has some extremely creepy and questionable practices that he says lead to the curing of cancer, but his relationship workshops that cost tens of thousands of dollars have mostly led to divorce. He also involves his daughter Natalie, and she claims that she can communicate with a woman's ovaries. A New South Wales Supreme Court jury even found that it was true that he leads a socially dangerous and socially harmful cult. In our number four spot today, we have James Gibson. A man named James Gibson has an extremely troubled past and is actually a killer, which is truly never good, but he also believes that he is the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. I feel like even if you really felt like this, that might just be one secret I would keep to myself, but I guess James just feels differently. James really did have a difficult childhood and upbringing, which is quite sad. He lost his dad at a young age to the Black Saturday bushfires, and he got into drugs as a teenager. In 2015, he attacked and killed a man named Glenn Sullivan, and when asked why he did it, he said, he killed my dad, I saw it in the smoke. James explained to his psychiatrist about his reincarnation belief, and he also explained that the German soldiers were controlling him and had ordered him to kill someone so that they could find him and recognize him so that they could come and retrieve him. All in all, James has obviously had a rough go. The things he's done obviously cannot be excused, but I hope he has received some help and some treatment for everything he's got going on. In our number three spot today, we have James Lennon. James was only four years old when he began to recount events from his past life. He swore that he had been a World War II pilot that had been shot down over Yojima. These memories first came back when James' parents found him one night after he had woken up from a nightmare yelling, airplane crash, plane on fire, little man can't get out. James explained that his name in his past life was also James and that he had flown an aircraft called Natoma. His parents did some research after these claims and found that there was an aircraft carrier during World War II called the Natoma Bay, and there was a pilot who had been killed in action in this plane over the Pacific named James Houston. They began to ask him questions about his past life, including questions about the airplane that would have been truly surprising for a small child to have the answers to. Like when his mom referred to an object on the bottom of a toy plane as a bomb, and James responded by correcting her, telling her it was a drop tank. Or when one day they were all watching a documentary on the History Channel, and the narrator of the show referred to a plane as a zero, and James said that was untrue and it was actually a Tony. I have no idea what any of this means, but apparently James.
James was right both times. This is obviously a pretty unbelievable story and many people think James just took an interest in World War II and planes at a young age and had been exposed to this information previously, but his parents swear that just isn't true. In our number two spot today we have Lee. When a child named Lee was only two years old, he began talking about his other house with his other mom. This would certainly be quite concerning to any parent, and by the time he was three, he was claiming that his birthday was on June 26th, even though it was not. This continued on, and Lee's claims grew and grew. He began to give more information on what he remembers as his past life, saying that his middle name was Ko, he wrote movies for a living, he had a daughter named Jennifer, and that he had passed away at the age of 48. This is all pretty crazy for a toddler to be explaining, but instead of being frightened, Lee's parents began inquiring more and asking him more questions. They wanted to know which movie he had written as to possibly figure out who their son believed he had been before. His parents began to ask him titles of different movies to see if any rang a bell, and when they asked him about Gone with the Wind, Lee got very excited and said that he had definitely written that one. Lee's parents obviously quickly googled the movie to find out more information, and this is when they found out about the movie's writer, Sidney Co. Howard. Sydney, of course, had the correct middle name. His birthday was June 26th, he did have a daughter named Jennifer, and he did pass away at the age of 48. My initial reaction is that his parents had possibly unknowingly fed him this information, but apparently this Google search was the first time his parents had heard any of this information, aside from hearing it from their child. This is certainly quite a crazy story, and one that may possibly have me convinced. In our number one spot today, we have Barbara Carlin. A woman named Barbara Carlin was born in 1954 in Sweden, and by the time she could talk, she began telling her parents some pretty frightening stories. She said she could remember men kicking down the door of her home and taking her away, which is obviously quite a frightening memory for a child to be having, and one that had certainly never happened in Barbara's life at that point. She also told them a name that means a lot to all of us now, but at the time, her parents had no idea who this person was. That name was Anne Frank. Anne Frank, of course, passed away in a concentration camp in 1945 after hiding in an attic with her family, trying to avoid persecution for being Jewish. Just 10 years after Anne's passing, she wasn't well known like she is today, but when Barbara was 10 years old, her family took her to Amsterdam and she was able to lead them to Anne's home with no directions at all. She was then able to identify a spot on the wall where Anne had hung photos up, and she also told her parents that the steps in the home were different than she had remembered them, which held up with the history of construction that the house had gone through. By the time she was 16, she was already writing books and poetry, and she actually ended up going on to befriend a close relative of Anne's named Buddy Elias. Whether Barbara is a real and true reincarnation of Anne is of course to be proven for sure, but I definitely do like the idea of Anne connecting with people from her life and also having a much better life this time as Barbara. Alright, Right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. If you have any reincarnation stories, please let me know. It's just the craziest, coolest thing. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.